right guys, well that's a good feeling. Getting those seven hammers finished. They're ready to ship as soon as that linseed oil soaks in and dries a little bit. So start getting them packaged up tomorrow. It's a good feeling. So that's the first pre-order batch of hammers from Fire Creek Forge, pretty exciting. But you might be asking yourself, what's so great about these hammers? Why would I want to buy one? Why do they look the way they look? So let's talk about that for a minute. I'm gonna use one of my personal hammers here to show you. And you can see it's got some use on it. Trusty uh, forging hammer. So first of all, this is called a rounding hammer. And the reason for that is because one side of it is rounded. And the other side of it is sort of flat, but not completely, because you don't want a completely flat hammer face. Now there's a lot of different styles of rounding hammers out there. But I want to talk to you specifically about the Fire Creek Forge rounding hammer that we have here. First of all, you'll notice it has a square face and mostly square in, it, in shape on this side as well. The reason for that, as with some other hammer designs, is that gives you a longer, much longer die area on all four sides of the hammer. This is extremely beneficial in a lot of different applications, especially bladesmithing perhaps where you can use this die to really get into spots and forge with it. On a typical hammer, such as this uh, four pound sledge, it's got a rounded off face and the only available die edge you have is this that's about five, five eighths of an inch wide, which really limits your ability. This is really just for striking something right in the general center of the, of the face of the hammer. You can still use it for forging, but it's not nearly as versatile as something like this. One of the ways you would use this longer die area on this style of hammer is to hold your hammer at about a 45 degree angle as you're forging. And this is the most efficient way to draw out material. It provides a very aggressive action on your stock because of the minimized surface area of that corner. And then once you have created a series of mountains or what you would call divots in there, you can go ahead and flatten those out. Likewise, you could use the rounding side of the hammer to do the same thing, and you could also more or less flatten it out with the rounding side. That's one thing the rounding side does, is it provides a little bit more efficient drawing out because of the minimized surface area due to the dome shape. Another important feature of the Fire Creek Forge Hammer is the ergonomics to it. So the forging hammer is primarily intended to be used on the anvil, so we need to start there for a minute. The height that the face of your anvil should reach is the level at which your knuckles hang as you stand with good posture and make a fist. If your anvil is higher or lower than that, you're either going to be bending over more or overextending how you stand with your bent forward or you know, not able to follow through on your swing completely and come up short. All of those things are gonna give you problems ergonomically as you're forging. And again, it can be easily avoided. The, one of the design features with the Fire Creek Forge rounding hammer is that the distance between the handle and the face of the hammer is minimized. And that means that you want to be able to look at your knuckles and have the face of your hammer approximately come into line with those. You can see right here the face of my hammer is very close to the plane of my knuckles depending on how I hold my hand, but it's much closer than, for example, this hammer right here. And again, a half an inch, five eighths of an inch, that can make a big difference ergonomically. With an anvil of proper height, the Fire Creek Forge hammer is designed to give you the best ergonomic experience during forging that you can have. Another feature you'll probably notice on the Fire Creek Forge rounding hammer is the shorter handle. This handle is between 11 and 12 inches long. A little bit different than your typical hammer handle. A lot of times you'll see blacksmiths using hammers similar to this and holding the hammer way out here, way out here. Now, I realize that some people are used to this and it's their preferred method, but you have to take into account simple physics. The longer this lever is, which is what it is, the more pressure and uh, resistance it's going to put on your joints as you're using this hammer. Because it can. It's a simple machine, simple physics. The weight of this hammer head is able to put more strain on your joints all the way up through your shoulder with a longer handle. That's just all there is to it. This hammer right here is four and a half pounds. I typically use a five and a half pound hammer for most of my forging. These are weights that you're not going to start out with. 
However, as you work up in your forging career, you will notice that you're going to need a bigger hammer to get work done more efficiently instead of hitting the steel harder with a lighter hammer. All these design features together allow you to use a heavier hammer to be more efficient without sacrificing ergonomics and comfort during forging. Instead of using a hammer handle and holding it way out here to try to get the power of your swing and allowing that to torque around your joints and your wrist and put undue strain and stress on your joints, this allows you to hold the hammer where it best balances in conjunction with your body. And using an appropriate hammer weight, you can get the most efficient work done with the most comfort. And in my book, that's a win. Once we've created a high functioning quality product, style, looks, and inspirational design is important to me as well. So what I've done here is create what I feel like is sort of a Viking-esque, old world, historical type hammer. Something that conjures up images maybe of the old village blacksmith in, uh, in Europe perhaps, or maybe not too far from the shores of Norway in some Viking age. I do know that this hammer is inspiring to me and I hope it is to you as well. And as if all that wasn't enough already, these are hand forged by me in Texas, United States of America, from steel manufactured in Saugine, Texas, United States of America. So if you're interested in getting one of these Fire Creek Forge rounding hammers, the best thing you can do is stay tuned to the channel because I will be announcing upcoming pre-orders for limited quantities of these hammers in the near future. And if you're interested in seeing how I make these, go ahead and check out this card up here and click on that video and you can see the entire process. As always, thanks for watching and we will see you on the next video.